live from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE, covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Veeam On 2018, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is day one of our coverage of Veeam On, the second year theCUBE has been here. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Zeb Ahmed is here. He's the senior offering manager for VMware with the IBM Cloud, at IBM, of course. Thanks for coming to theCUBE, good to see you, Zeb. Thank you for having me, very excited to be here. Yeah, so um, IBM Cloud, big part of your business. Obviously, you know, VMware, you've been there for a long time. Partnerships with Veeam. Lay it all out for us. What's going on at IBM, IBM Cloud? Yeah, so we started the VMware partnership a couple of years ago. And you know, our goal was really to build a practice around VMware which was automated, take it to the next level essentially, not just be a me too player, what everybody else was doing out there, but rather um, make the transition from on-premises to the cloud much easier for those VMware customers. So we've automated a lot of things on the VMware platform. Um, you can deploy a VMware stack you know, in a matter of minutes uh, instead of days and months. So it's a much easier transition. We've also worked with a lot of partners, uh, such as Veeam, you know, um, what customers was using on-premises. Uh, and we've allowed them to have those capabilities in the cloud as well in a very automated fashion. But correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you guys were first with, you know, doing something with, with VMware in the cloud. You're kind of a year ahead of most. I mean, I... Uh, it was a few months ahead. They, they were the first big partner out there of, with, with the, the VMware cloud, basically. Yeah. We've got but, but in cloud terms, air and everything like that. In terms like of that. shipping, actually, you guys, I think, we were, were the first, first ones, yeah. So yeah. we were the first ones to market with Cloud Foundation. Yeah, stack, that's right. right? Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, the other vendors followed as well. But yeah, that's been doing great, right? Um, and again, it's fully automated, matter of minutes, you can deploy the whole stack. A lot of value add there. Yeah, so, so, Maybe help set the picture first a little bit, because we talk about this multi-cloud world. IBM owns a lot of applications. IBM partners with a lot. You know, where, where does IBM see themselves playing in this multi-cloud, multi-app world? Great question. I think I, so I refer to it as the two T's. So the first one being the transition, and then the transformation. So the trans transition phase, it's really where the challenge has been for those customers, the barrier to entry. How do these customers actually make that move seamless to the cloud, um, especially the space that IBM is in on the enterprise side. You know, these applications are legacy, uh, very, very complicated design, a lot of dependencies. So that was a challenge that we try to solve for. And I think we're at a state now where we've not only solved for that, uh, we've also, I don't know if you guys have uh, seen the HCX release that we had with VMware uh, recently, which, was, which is a great migration tool and helps customer onboard cloud and adapt to cloud much, much faster. Um, and then also build that ecosystem partner network. So all those tools that you were using on premises like Veeam, right, making those available in the cloud for those customers uh, has been very, and also on the transformation side, right, so not only just move them to the cloud, but also um, help them leverage and go up the stack. So microservices, blockchain, Watson, uh, containers, all those things are available to our customers. Yeah, well I think that's a key point that I wanted to, to highlight is people often say, well how does IBM compete you know, with uh, some of the big you know, cloud players? You're not just infrastructure as a service. You've got a giant SaaS portfolio. Yes. You mentioned Watson, so, so talk about your strategy in, in that regard. Yeah, I mean so the enterprise customer, a typical customer, whether it's financial industry or whether it's healthcare, transportation, et cetera, Nobody is just looking for a partner where they can just move their infrastructure to. They're looking for the next state, they're looking to transform their business, they're trying to um, you know, get, utilize all those new capabilities that exist in the cloud today. And IBM has solved for that exactly, because not only just you just move your infrastructure and workloads, but now you can consume all those additional value adds in the cloud, like Watson, and make, make it for a more intelligent solution in the end. Right. So. So that's a key differentiator. I mean, there's only a couple of companies that, that have that. Well, I guess, you know, you guys, Oracle, Microsoft, obviously has yeah. the, the, the applications. And, and the, the IBM talks a lot about the cognitive piece. Am I correct, you can only get Watson in, in the IBM cloud? Is that still the case, or you now have it on-prem? No, no, Watson can be consumed uh, using an API. So it's, it's a PaaS platform. Um, and if somebody wanted to consume Watson for the on-premises workloads and wanted to bring that intelligence for that on-premises environment, they can do that. Are you seeing more demand for that? Or is oh, it yes. primarily in the cloud? We've got a huge traction in the healthcare space, especially. Uh, there's a lot of financial customers that are onboarding that as well. We're, so Watson's doing great in that regard. For yeah. privacy reasons and you know, That's data right. sovereignty. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Seb, one of the things we've been watching with Veeam for the last few years is how do they penetrate deeper in the enterprise? Of course, yeah. IBM has you know, strong position in the enterprise. 
Help connect for us how, how, how the Veeam and IBM partnership go together. So I think this was a very easy, easy answer uh, for a lot of our customers because Veeam has a lot of penetration on the on-premises um, workloads, especially on the backup and business continuity space. So when we looked at the, the partners and the, uh, the products that existed in the space, and we really looked at the market space, what the customers were consuming, Veeam had a huge market share, and like I said previously, we wanted to solve for those problems, and we wanted to keep the tool set the same tool set that they were using today on premises. So this was very seamless for us, and it is seamless for the customers to move to IBM Cloud and leverage the same tools exactly. So, talk about choice, because I can imagine you getting a call from you know, Ed Walsh, hey, how about using my data protection software instead yeah. of Veeam? You know, yeah. how, do you, how do you manage that? You know, it, it is tough, right? It is obviously tough. IBM also has a huge portfolio of products, right? Um, in the end, the decision was, or it really came down to, what is it the customers are looking for? When it came to the backup space, especially on the VMware platform, um, you know, the, the answer was there. A lot of the VMware customers use Veeam. In addition to that, Veeam also checks a lot of other boxes for us. So not only does the VMware stack, but also, uh, I don't know if, you, uh, if it's been announced yet or not, um, but uh, AIX is something, a beta that they're launching at this event. So that is huge for IBM. Really? Oh yes, uh, they're also in the, uh, the bare metal space. So you know, consolidated view of all yeah. your backups for your bare metal, for your AIX, for you know, virtualized platform. So. Yeah. so the power guys will be happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sam, for, the, for those that aren't as familiar anymore, I mean, remember AIX back in the day, but this is the second week in a row, I'm talking about AIX, it was Nutanix last week, and it's Veeam today. How much AIX is there still out in the wild? There's quite a bit, I mean, IBM, if you guys know the, the background, right? When software was acquired, it was a bare metal shop. Yeah. So with that, a lot of the power stuff came as well. So we have a huge power practice in IBM. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, and well, it's, it's still, I remember the Steve Mills charts that showed the availability of, of AIX versus, oh, the, only, the only more available platform was the mainframe. And That's then right. AIX and then, That's right. And you had all that other stuff that, that everybody else buys, but yeah. uh, it's a volume market, so it kind of makes sense though. Yeah. People will pay up for that. It's still a huge install base, not growing. Yeah. Right, and Nutanix has a relationship with uh, yes. the power guy, so maybe that's where Absolutely sort of vected is. in, right? Sure, sure. So, yeah. but, but Linux, of course, is you know, the hot space, right? I mean, sure, you see it's powering the, the web. Well, I'm a VMware guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's Linux sitting on top of some of them. That's those, right, so. of course. You got of Linux course. on mainframe, right? Yes. Yeah, everywhere. But, okay, all right, so, so talk a little bit more about what you're seeing from the VMware customer base, how it's synergistic, and not just sort of a, a one-way trip into Hotel California. Yeah, so you know, a typical VMware customer that we're seeing who's on premises today looking to IBM Cloud or actually take the leap into the cloud, um, especially on the enterprise phase, these customers want to transform. I mean, there's been a lot of questions uh, for them, especially the customer base IBM focused on, um, you know, questions around security, compliance, um, data con business continuity, and, and data protection and such. Um, so these customers not only want to just make the leap into the cloud, but they also want to solve for some of these channel challenges uh, and also go up the stack like I was mentioning. So we're seeing a huge push for containers for those customers that are moving to VMware. Uh, they want to build up the stack on the PaaS layer and also want to leverage Watson and services like that. Yeah, could, could you expand on that a little more? Things like, are you working with PKS, uh, the solution with VMware and Pivotal and Kubernetes stuff? Or, yes, yeah. yes, Kubernetes, Dockers. Uh, we also give the customers the ability to do their own stuff, go, go up the stack. I mean, in, in the end, you know, they can they can consume us from an IaaS standpoint and build their PaaS on top, or we can they can use our own, so Kubernetes, Dockers, et cetera. What's the story, Stu, with Cloud Foundry these days, right? There was a big push early on, and I feel like I can, I'm not as close as you are, but there seems to be a, I don't want to say a pullback, but maybe less enthusiasm. What's the lay of the land? Sure, I mean, IBM was one, one, one of the earliest, uh, you know, Foundry, Blue yeah. Mix, uh, I believe, and when it went to IBM Cloud, IBM has a few different offerings. I didn't see as big of a push from IBM at the Cloud Foundry Summit, it was that last month, but uh, you know, IBM, like most of the cloud providers, are giving customers choice. That's right. So I guess the, the question is what? And heavy and open source. I mean, right. I'm seeing IBM heavy push. I'm wondering serverless, if you've got any commentary there. We've been looking at like OpenWhisk and some of the pieces there. Yeah, OpenWhisk is there. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, serverless is a thing that a lot of these customers, back to your own que original question, mm. a lot of these customers are looking for those types of services, and yeah. they're all available in the catalog. Have, are, are, it's still pretty early. That hasn't overtaken the discussions of the containers and the Kubernetes stuff in your world, has it? It hasn't, but, but I think the enterprise customers who are looking to move to cloud, they are thinking about those things. So these are some of the check boxes that need to be checked for them for the future growth, et cetera. So you've got VMware's, you know, obviously virtualization strategy, you've got containers come in. I remember when we had Pat Gelsinger in theCUBE several years ago, 
when when containers were, you know, Docker was rocketing, and it was like, oh, Docker's going to kill VMware. And Pat's response was, look, we've got the best containers in the world. We're going to embrace <coughs> containers. We're like, oh, sure. But that's exactly what what happened. What's yeah. IBM's point of view? On yeah, that? I, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you know, we want to give them the option to do whatever they want to do. We're seeing a lot of traction on the microservices side on the containerization. Um, but I think it's going hand in hand. A lot of the customers are using VMware Platform still, yet they're also leveraging some of these other microservices and containers. Um, so, I, so I think Pat's right on. You know, I, I think originally what was people were talking about getting rid of the IaaS layer of VMware, just going containers completely. Um, you know, our take is, let give the customers all the functionality and the ability to do whatever they want to do. We are seeing it's more of a mix at the moment. And we had uh, Ed Punyon on recently, founder of, 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 one of the founders of VMware, and he was talking about the challenges in the data center at scale. And in particular, when you introduce virtualization and you, you know, reduce some of the, the hardware resources, how do you, how do you deliver you know, predictable, you know, high performance at scale and some of the challenges there. That's even on-prem. Now introduce cloud and you've got distance and latency and other physics. So what do you, what do you, what's the discussion like with customers around how to architect you know, the ideal cloud, on-prem, hybrid? You know, it's a great question because that is a question that I get asked all the time because in the enterprise space, like I said, these customers in a lot of cases have a hybrid or multi-cloud strategy, so it never becomes a key part of that discussion. Um, for us, uh, the answer is very simple. You know, we, we've laid down the fiber across the globe, across all these data centers. So when you're talking about latency and data transfer and those types of speeds or having you know, a multi-cloud strategy across the globe, uh, it's a very simple and easy conversation because now, not only do we make all that information available to our customers as far as what latency to expect from which data center to another one across the globe, um, but also it's all, it's all private and, and, and it's all secure um, and it makes for a very good multi-cloud story. I don't know if you saw Ginny Rometty's talk at IBM Think, but she used the term, um, a lot of people, tongue in cheek, making fun, but I kind of like it, uh, incumbent disruptors. I mean, yes. look, if, if you're IBM and you get the client base that IBM has, you better come up with a term like that because that's exactly what you're trying to help your customers do. So my question is, where does the cloud and your offering you know, with VMware fit into the incumbent disrupted scenario? Yeah, so uh, VMware, like I said earlier, uh, you know, we didn't want to be a me too player with VMware. Not only did we want to have a good story with VMware, because obviously VMware has a huge market share when it comes to virtualization, uh, but on top of that, we wanted to be more futuristic and solve for those, some of those questions and concerns that the enterprise customer had. Um, so you know, tight integration on the enterprise space, uh, uh, on, on the microservices, containerization. Watson is a huge part of the VMware platform. You can seamlessly integrate into Watson and you know really have intelligent uh, you know decision making on the VMware platform. So um, you know we wanted to ensure that we were you know helping our enterprise customers move to cloud, yet also solve for the future problems. So the incumbent piece would be both VMware and IBM. Right, you have incumbent customers. Uh, the disruptor would be, I guess, cloud, all the new cloud services, certainly the machine intelligence, cognitive, et cetera, yep. components is the disruptive capability. Now, it's up to you to figure out, okay, how do you apply all that? Presumably IBM and, and your partners can help. Yeah, and, and you know, here's the thing. Uh, you, know, you mentioned earlier, IBM is one of the only companies in the world that can have an end-to-end -end um, not just infrastructure, but also services wrapped around it. So if you're a customer who's not only looking to move to the cloud, but also have services wrapped around to go end to end, you know, IBM is, is the company to do that for you. Well, it's interesting. Okay, I got to ask him, Stu. So we had, we were at Dell Technologies World a couple weeks ago, yeah. and we had Jeff Clark on, and we asked him, we said, look, companies like IBM, HPE, sort of, IBM selling off its x86 division, HPE splitting, Dell did the opposite, you know, the mega merger. And his comment was, well, I don't see how you can do end to end without both ends. Now his definition of <laughs> is obviously different than your end. Sure, sure, sure. So I have to ask you, what do you mean by end to end? Does, is the client sort of just a commodity, we can get that anywhere? It's not really an integration challenge? 
So what I'm saying and to end what I'm talking about is a enterprise customer looking to move to the cloud, um, solve for the future problems, um, essentially reinvent themselves, transform their business, leverage the new applications, microservices that are there, but also have services wrapped around it, right? Somebody who's there to help them end to end, uh, whether it's just doing migrations, for example, right, from on-premises to the cloud, but also help them onboard and guide them on what is there in the cloud or, or, or the microservices or, or, or our uh, PaaS layer and how they can transform Really. So that to me, Stu, is Zeb's talking about not a hardware view of end to end, but a, maybe a systems and a software view Correct. of end to end and yep. the cloud services. All right, yeah. Zeb, thank you very much. Do uh, you have one more? You good? I'm good. Thanks, thanks so much for coming Guys, to the Cube. Thank you very much, you. appreciate really it. Appreciate yep. it. Yep. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is the Cube. We're live from VMON 2018 in Chi Town. We'll be right back. <laughs>